he was like kind of like an intern here in the music department, uh, worked here with me a few years ago, and has since been doing some work on his own, been writing, got a book here, and he's going to tell you all about some of his progress. Yes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Right um, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, and jump in if you ever uh, want to add anything. So let me just um, give out the book and continue that short intro. So like Matt was saying, I graduated yeah, yeah. here in um, 2008. And I was always, and maybe Matt's told you what the uh, music program was like back then, but to say the least, it was not nearly as yet, thank you, um, well organized and run as it is now. So I'd always play guitar and stuff like that. And then when I graduated here, I went to Duke um, and uh, left with, uh, I left Duke with an undergrad degree in music. And like, I'm sorry, man, what's your name? Troy, what's up? Um, so, like I was just telling Troy, you know, whenever I learned yes, at Duke, I, um, yeah, of course, everyone got one? I'll take um, that project. There's uh, the one, I know one student, Alex, can't worry to change it, but it's AMI here. So. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, like I was saying, so, like, you know, when I went to these classes at Duke, I was being taught by, I don't know, like 50 and 60 year old white guys, so, like, they're not going to listen to rap, you know? Um, so, I was always really confused, like, I would go to class, right? And I would learn, I loved it too. Like, I love classical music. I would learn about Mozart, Beethoven, Debussy, um, even, you know, like the jazz guys, Schwartz, maybe talks about Coltrane and all that. But then when I went home, I never, ever, you know, went and turned on Symphony Number no. 5 by Beethoven or whatever. I would listen to Eminem, Nas, Kendrick, all the different rappers in this book. So after a while, I started asking myself, like, why, why do I love learning classical music but listen to rap? So this book was really a attempt on my part to try and figure out why that was. And what I found out, I think, was that no matter what kind of music you make, it could be rock, jazz, rockabilly, blues, rock, rap, classical, all good music is made according to like the same central principles. All of it is, at some basic level, similar to everything else, no matter what genre it is. So this book has ten different chapters, and each chapter talks about something different in the music. It could be, you know, versatility is one of them. Uh, good mu all good music is always complex. It's always eclectic, which means it gets its influences from different places. So if anyone, anyone like Outkast here, rapper, yeah. So they got it from jazz, funk, soul, blues. Um, Farrell Monch is, and just in the same way that like, you know, um, the Beatles are eclectic. What, what do people always say? You know, they have their psychedelic albums, they have their blues albums, rock albums, even classical music albums. So my point in this book was to try to point out that even groups like the Beatles, like Beethoven, are still similar to everyone. Nas, Eminem, Lil Wayne, yes Lil Wayne, um, uh, and all, maybe not Lil Wayne today, but we'll get there. Um, so, so, so yeah, uh, so yeah, so with that, let me, um, let me just talk a little bit more about what I talk about. So, you know, one of my favorite lines of all time is a Nas line um, where he's like, I never sleep because sleep is the cousin of death. Uh, that's from Illmatic. And I love it. And people love it, you know, because it's just poetic. It's like, it's like sleeping when you're sleeping, like you're vulnerable. Anyone could come and get you with a gun. Um, you always got to be watching your back, stuff like that. And I think people have started to get a better appreciation for rappers and how they can tell society certain things, you know, everyone went crazy over Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly album and how he brought to society's attention stuff like uh, police brutality of minorities, um, how there aren't any jobs so people will go and sell drugs and that's why they sell drugs. It's not because they're evil, it's because they need money to feed their families and feed their babies and they didn't have money to go to college so they couldn't get jobs or whatever. And people, so people appreciate that, and people appreciate them as poets, you know, Eminem has, uh, uh, what's he say, I'm a poet to some, a regular modern day Shakespeare, Jesus Christ of these modern, latter day saints here, and he's saying people appreciate it as poetry, and there's a book, and they consider, some people do consider him a modern day Shakespeare with his long rhymes on songs like Lose Yourself, or the opening of, um, Just Don't Give a F, the name of the, name of the song is not just... I don't give a F, but the real thing. Um, so, but what I try to talk about is in that Nas line, he says, I never sleep, because sleep is the cousin of death. But what I talk about with rappers is not those specific words or what they mean, how he's vulnerable. It's da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. So that's what I talk about. I talk about the music of it, the rhythm of it, because I don't think a lot of people appreciate 
just how musically um, deep and complex these guys are. And at a certain point, I get it. Like, I get why they wouldn't think, you know, because like Eminem, Nas, they didn't go to school, they didn't get a fancy degrees from Juilliard or some conservatory out there. They can't play any instruments that you can see. They don't know how to put together a chord progression. But they're still expert musicians, and I think that is what I would, that's what the book says, and that is kind of what I would like to impress upon you guys um, today. So, real quick, we're going to listen to a Lil Wayne song that points out some of those things I was talking about. But first, um, who, who would say they are rap fans here? Raise your hands. Alright, okay, this is a lot more than I was uh, ready for. Who, and does anyone actively not like rap? They're like, I hate rap, I don't like it, if anyone, go. Here we go. All right, this is good. I mean, so, 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 you, so, you, so, so you they ask me like, how can you be in a hip hop band? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, for uh, Philly. Um, yeah, but they. Uh, oh, so you you just put up with this stuff while I was uh, working here? Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. I don't act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I just. I don't act yeah, yeah, no, because just because there are some people you know, they call it they call it C rap music. So it's like crap music. Um, but C rap. Um, and so who? Who, of uh, people who said they're rap fans, who are your favorite rappers? I'll try to work in them and talk about it. Eminem? Alright, yeah. He's, uh, old. He's, uh, old, 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 yeah. old Eminem. Old Eminem? Yeah, yeah, of course. Them shady. Anyone else? Yeah, Have Doom? Karis One. Actually, he's in the book. Yeah, that's right. Karis One? Who's that? Who said that? I did. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Going back, yeah. Um, anyone else? Old Wayne. Low Wayne? Old Wayne. Logic? Logic? Ooh, actually, I just wrote an article on him. We could talk a little bit about him. Anyone else? Ti. Yeah. Ti. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, he's, he's a complete yeah. blind spot for me, so I don't know if I can work him in. Um, I love his beats, though. All right, so let's just. So whoever was um, who said Lil Wayne? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do old, as you might imagine, old Lil Wayne. And this is pretty much the chapter in the book. It's the fourth one, I think. Like you were saying, it was old Lil Wayne. And right now, we don't have nearly enough time to go into why Lil Wayne is not as good as he used to be. Um, so we're just, that's that's long and short of it, probably. Um, but yeah, he, um, so the Hot Boys, right? So, yeah, so, you know, he came up, this would have been 2001, maybe. But before he became the huge solo artist that all of you guys know, he was in this group called the Hot Boys with other dudes from New Orleans. Um, BG, Turk, Juvenile, and they released this awesome album called Guerrilla Warfare, and it was 2001. And they made this song called Riding. Um, and what we're going to do is Lil Wayne, I think, like you were saying, is a great example of musical complexity. That all good music at some level is complex. And I'm not saying, I'm absolutely not saying that it's good because it is complex. I'm saying it, I'm saying good music is complex because 